Hey guys, um, I decided that it was about time to update my video again. Uh, I've just got better quality equipment, so I figured I would just re-upload this with the, you know, all the same information, maybe a little bit more stuff added, so. Um, because this video is the first in a series for beginners, I'm going to drone a bit about some of the basics, and I'm going to answer a question I'm getting a lot in my video comments. So anybody who knows what a tablet is, who knows what the GIMP is, just skip ahead to when you see me going through the layers here, um, because that's ultimately what I'm going to demonstrate, is how I use the GIMP to compose um, a complete character illustration. So um, I'm just going to talk about the GIMP for a second. Uh, it's photo manipulation freeware. It's comparable to Adobe Photoshop, only it's far simpler, and honestly, it is very powerful. If you master it, you may never want or need to go to a more expensive program. So you can learn um, more about the GIMP uh, by following just a link I'm going to put in the video description because I don't want to talk about that for a whole year or so. Um, the question I'm getting asked a lot is how do you get those pencil-like lines or about issues with drawing uh, related to uh, using a mouse. So um, let me just make it perfectly clear that when drawing with a mouse it is impossible to enable pressure sensitivity. Uh, pressure sensitivity is what people are um, talking about when they say, uh, you know, pencil-like lines. Uh, the thickness of the line and the opacity or clearness of the line will change based on the pressure you're using to draw, and it will look far more organic and dynamic. And, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't possibly live without it personally. So, um... Yeah, and, and beyond that, it's using a mouse is very difficult to draw. Um, some people can do it. I'm not one of them. Uh, you, you know, if you want to learn what a tablet is, or um, you know, in case you don't know, just Google it. There are um, you know a few good brands, and they're all you know they're the main ones. So you don't need to go digging around too hard. Um, you know, I, I recommend Wacom personally. That's my favorite. But you know, do your research. Google's there. So. Um, uh, let me see. So, oh yeah, um, I've got another video that uh, people should know about also if they're beginners. Um, it talks about how to troubleshoot uh, why pressure sensitivity might not be working. If you have a tablet, where to get your drivers to make sure it works because uh, new tablet owners, they usually fall into this. Um, they, they buy it, they think it's just going to work, and they plug it in, and they don't realize they have to go get software off the um, the company that makes their tablets website. So um, I'll walk people through that process um, as well and a uh, few other things. So uh, I'll link to that video also. So um, yeah, I'm just going to get into the layers now. Talk about one of the coolest things in my opinion about illustrating. Um, so I used to have a, a sketch as my background but I, I erased it instead of adding in a new layer that would hide my original sketch. I just erased it. Um, which I kind of wish I hadn't now because uh, would have been helpful for my demonstration here. But I used to have a base sketch on this background layer, and then I would draw uh, draw lines on top. And sometimes instead of doing lines, if you've got a detailed sketch, I recommend doing the shadow layer next, and only if you've got a very detailed sketch because uh, it's going to be really hard to do a shadow layer if you don't really have a good guideline. Now see, these shadows are very rough. That's because I did my line art first. And doing your line art first uh, usually compels an artist to make much heavier lines, and that's okay in this, in this particular picture, but um, with each composition, uh, it's good to consider how heavy you want to be on your line art. So I'm going to get into more of those details about line art and shading and stuff in uh, other videos and obviously I'm not a complete master uh, but they're just the basic tips and then from there you can go on and, and uh, seek out more knowledge so um, so let's see I do my line art layer usually before I do my shadow layer and then uh, you've got color layers as well just the blue color layer in this case, then details, and then clothing and accessories. So there he is in flat color. 
And now, when you're doing the shadow layer, another thing, if you want to just rush ahead and do the color layer, uh, don't have it visible when you do the shadows. Because getting the values, uh, knowing how dark to make a shadow, it, it can be really, um, it can be really hard to, hard, it, it, it can be disrupted by the natural values that these, that the colors have. So, and each of these layers is visible on top of each other. So if I put his lines down below, oops, yeah, if I put the lines all the way below the picture, then obviously you're not going to be able to see them. So keep the order of things in mind. So what you have is your sketch or your background. Then you've got the color layers then the shadows on top of the colors and the lines on top of the shadows and highlights I put in front of the lines that way they really seem to be you know um, diffusing everything they seem dominant it really gives the image more three dimensions uh, if, you, if you don't have the highlights in front of the lines like obviously it just it, it, it can look cleaner and it can look pretty good in its own way I'm I'm just fond of having the highlights on top. It just really makes it look more 3D. But then again, with these heavy lines, it looks good because it's kind of a comic book style, so it gives you a lot of detail. Um, and I'll just leave it like that for the heck of it. But um, now glow effects. These are what you really want in in the foreground. This isn't um, this isn't a highlight or or a light source as much as it is. Um, you know, it's, it's an effect. So it's glowing from within, as you can see. So certain effects, you, know, you just got to tinker with it, because it just wouldn't look. It just wouldn't look as, it just doesn't seem to glow if you put it behind the lines. So in this case, it's, it's just a strategy. But um, also, you might want more than one highlight layer, because if you've got multiple light sources, you don't want, and they're like different colored, for example, one's a green light source, and the other's like a... Uh, soft yellow light source, you'll want to have them on separate layers because they're going to start blending together if you start messing around with them too much. So, um, yeah, uh, that's that's the basics of it. Uh, I, I do plan on doing an individual video for each of these stages and uh, get into what details that I, I know or, or can think of off the top of my head. But, um, again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in a state of improving myself. I'm a student. I'm not uh, not a graduated master, but but every bit helps. If I can help other beginners, then that makes me happy. So.